Use these part drawings to build the part in SOLIDWORKS. Unit system millimeters, part origin arbitrary, material AISI 1020. This is the first example for the Helix command main video. The links to that video and other examples and lectures are found in the description below. This geometry is of course only a simple example where we get to use what we learned in the main video. Squared ends like these are not at all common in real life springs, so if you want to check out how to make a more realistic squared end spring, you can check the link to that in the description of this video. To replicate this part as is, we begin with a helix curve on the top plane and draw a 20 mm diameter circle on it. Notice that since the front view has the connecting point between the top and bottom of the spring, right in front of the vertical centroid of the volume, we need to change the start angle of this helix from whatever default you have, in this case 225, to 0 degrees. The clockwise direction going up is correct though, so we leave it like that. We need a pitch of 10 or a height of 30 for 3 entire revolutions and a taper angle of 10 degrees and not taper outward. On a reference plane that we create 30 millimeters above the top plane, we draw an arc that has a center at the origin, begins where the helix ends, and covers 3 fourths of a turn, or what is the same 270 degrees. We add a Pierce relation and a horizontal one to constrain it and therefore fully define it. And we create the bottom helix, making sure that the rotation is now counterclockwise and that the helix goes down. We create the same 3 fourths of a coil, use composite curve on all four features to combine them, and sweep the composite curve with a 1.5 mm circular profile. We assign it a 1020 steel material and we're done. Notice that if you only have the top portion of this spring, we could not be able to use the mirror command to get the bottom half. The bottom half is not the mirror of the top part. If anything, the bottom half is the exact same as the top half, only rotated and translated to meet that origin of the helix. We could copy the part while rotating it 180 degrees with a center of rotation located at the origin, not the default volumetric centroid used by SOLIDWORKS. The links to more CSWA type examples as well as the main 10 minute lectures of the SOLIDWORKS course and other engineering courses are found in the description of this video. Make sure to check them out and thanks for watching.